Hello fellow entrepreneurs, Michael Strauch here from the Wix Training Academy and in today's video we're going to do a refresher on how to create databases and dynamic pages in Wix because Wix has added some new elements to their databases and also have made some of their dynamic pages integrate with more Wix apps. So we're going to just do a quick refresher on that so that way we have a good base because everybody watching this video knows that every good business, every good website starts with a solid foundation. So we need to get this foundation down before we could create anything more advanced. So with that said, if you're just joining us, thank you very much. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any Wix training content here. Head over to Wix wixtrainingacademy.com guys right here and click yes i want free wix content to enroll in our free wix training academy and if you're interested in hiring out our team to help you build your wix project head to that same website and click contact guys let's jump into today's video and talk about how we create wix code database and dynamic pages so first and foremost once you're in the wix editor you have to activate what we call developer tools to do this you go up here to these top settings and you'll see code down there, you'll see turn on developer, de, excuse me, developer tools. Very simply, turn that on, and then it'll say welcome to Wix code. You could either press start now or X that out. So once that happens, we see a couple things open up. Number one, we see our properties panel, our site structure down here to the left, and then our page manager or page code manager pop up down at the bottom. So you can actually get rid of this site structure here on the left by clicking this little arrow button and then it does that and to open it back up because we're going to need to for today's video, you just click that button back and it will open it. So now how to manage and create databases. So first and foremost guys, you'll see in this site structure, you'll see all of your pages, your public and backend codes, if you have any API integrations, anything like that, you'll likely be utilizing the public and backend codes uh, and web modules. But then under that you see database. So database is where you store customer information it's where you store um, information that's displayed on your dynamic pages it's where you store member information if you're creating a site with members and having member profiles all of that type of information that will use be used dynamically all along your website is going to be stored in your database custom user input forms if you're collecting input forms maybe a custom contact us form a custom lead evaluation form a new prospect form any of these types of things are going to be stored in our database so we have to create a database in order to store it so how do we create a database well to start you can either click add new collection or hover over here and click this plus button so I'm going to click the plus and then you'll see new collection you'd simply click that and then it gives you this little introducing database collections. Uh, you could just breeze through this, read through it if you want, and then start creating. So now what we have to do is we have to create a name for our database. So whatever you do here, it does not truly matter. Just make sure you make it a name that you could remember. And that way when you're utilizing it in your code, if you use code at all on your website, it's easy to remember and easy to name. So in this case, I will just call this... Um, member profile data you'll notice I didn't space anything it's all one uh, f uh, character technically one whole phrase here there's no spaces allowed um, and I named mine member profile data then you're gonna see what's this database collection for this is a very very important step so this is where you set up the permissions for your database depending on what you choose here depends on how uh, who and how your database is viewed so if you collect site or choose site content that means anybody can view data from this collection anyone that comes to your website can view this data if it's you know dynamically displayed anyone can and then if you choose form submission that means if you have a custom user input form anybody could submit data to this database so anyone that comes to your website can submit the data now, if you use some of these site member permissions ones, like member generated content, that means only members can be the one. So only site members, people that have registered to your Wix website through the Wix registration. I also have some custom registration feature videos that I have that I'll throw in the description or in a card can display data and uh, submit data to this database. The same goes for members only content. So that means only members, if you choose this, can view the content that's been added to this database so if you've got like a membership website and you're displaying content that you only want your members to see 
this would be a good database to store that members only content in and then you have members only form submission and this is where only members could submit that data so the member generated content means they could also modify it so edit or delete that data members only form submission means they could submit the data to the database members only then you have private data so this is access to that only admins get so if you have an exclusive page and maybe you have a couple admins for your website and you want to submit data and display like admin dashboards this is where you would choose private data so only the admin of the website gets to access this data and view it edit it update it delete it whatever that may be so if this is something you're building out for an admin or let's just say you're building a uh, a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace for example and you have the admin of the website so the owner of the website and then obviously you have two different style member accounts you have the consumer and then the other peer so the other consumer one selling one's buying well you might want an admin dashboard where you get access over everything so that way you can view all that data and that's only exclusive to you and then the last which gives you the most versatility is custom use I'm going to click custom use and show you how this works. So when we click custom use, it says right here, set up custom permissions. So then you can come in here, set up custom per permissions, and essentially you choose who gets to view what. So who can read content from this collection? Well, if you choose admin, that's private data. If you choose site member author, that means the person that wrote that data is the only one that could view it. If you choose site member, it means anyone registered on your site can view it, and anyone means anyone who comes to your website can view it. So I'm just gonna go through here and put anyone for the sake of this video. Um, again, who can create content for this collection? Who could submit to the database? anyone and then corresponding as I just mentioned for all the rest of them site member site member author who can delete anyone site member site member author admin however you set that up just be aware of how that works as I just explained with all the other ones so then you press set and create collection and then it's gonna go ahead and populate your database when it populates you're gonna see one field already in here title this field cannot be touched cannot be deleted cannot be altered it's a default which field which is totally fine it doesn't really mean anything you could utilize it if you wanted to uh, but you don't have to it's just set there as a placeholder but to start adding fields and getting familiar with the database this is the portion I wanted to show you so I'm not doing a complete database video in here I'm gonna show you how to at least set up a basic database so say we're collecting member profile data say we want to collect someone's full name their email maybe their phone number and then a profile picture in a description I'm gonna show you how to add all those fields so you're gonna come in here click add then we're gonna say for field name full name and then you could keep the field key as is I would keep it as is keep it easier on yourself so it just matches the field name and then now we have a couple new options here under field type so for full name we're gonna choose text okay but you'll see we've got a few new options we've got video in here which can be displayed on strip backgrounds only currently you've got URL you've got rich text which is new which means you can actually edit how that text looks in the database and then how it spits out on a dynamic page so it gives you more editing capabilities over the text You've got a media gallery, so a picture gallery or a video gallery and stuff like that. Galleries, you've got images, this collects images, documents, collects documents, date and time, so this will take timestamps and date stamps, uh, boolean, so this is like radio buttons, uh, check boxes, stuff like that, so boolean, numbers, numbers, pretty self-explanatory, and then reference. So you can now reference other databases in Wix. So say you're, uh, you're building a uh, e-commerce store and you've got a product page but you want to make sure that someone posts a review only for that specific product on that page well you would reference the products database and then reference that specific product field so then that's how it knows okay when something submitted here reference X and then Y is posted so it correlates with X that's what that reference field is for but full name we would click text we would click add then we'll go to email and once again we're gonna choose text technically um, in some of the user input fields you could specify email I'll show you that in a minute uh, so we're gonna choose text there and then for phone number 
We're also going to go with text. Sometimes this makes your life easier when dealing with people because sometimes they make mistakes when entering data into databases. So adding text just makes it easier. But sometimes you may want number. If you choose number, that means you can't have any dashes. So if you've ever gone to a website to put in your phone number and they won't let you put the dashes in between your numbers, that's because they're only accepting numbers into that database. So I'm going to put text because I like being able to put those dashes. Then we're going to choose uh, let's do bio. We'll just say they have a bio or once again going to choose text. Technically you could choose rich text here. It's up to you. We're going to utilize text and then profile picture. And then this one is going to be the image field type, right? So we're going to go here and click image because it's going to be a profile picture. So now that we've got these things, guys, we've added fields into our database. Now what we have to do and how I told you, we're going to create a dynamic page that will enable us to display the data. To create a dynamic page specific to this member profile data, you're simply going to click on this gear icon and click add a dynamic page. So what this does is it will start creating a dynamic page specific to the data on that database. You're then going to click start creating and then you choose whether you want an item page or a category page. Being that we're collecting an individual profile data page here, we're going to want an in item page because it's an individual's page. So then we're going to click next. We're going to choose and set our URL so you can have this is the URL for that specific user. So it will always say the name of the database, so member profile data, and then you could choose what this ending uh, little field type is here. So if you want it title, you could do title. If you don't, you could change it up. You could uh, change it and click add field, and maybe you want it to be their full name. So you want it to be backslash mem or forward slash member profile data forward slash their full name whatever that full name is in the database that they input we'll use full name and then you click pre create page it's then going to go ahead and add a completely blank page here so when it adds a completely blank page what this means is you have a completely creativity free or create uh, <laughs> excuse me you have complete creative freedom so you can do whatever you'd like on this page but you'll see it added a data set to the page. So by clicking uh, add a dynamic page from that database, it'll automatically create a data set from that database so that way you don't have to reorganize it specific and go into the data set settings and then assign it to that uh, database. But this is just a quicker method to that. So it gives you a data set and the rest is up to you. So let's just go into text. Uh, I'm, I'll just add a bunch of just... I'm not going to design this all sexy, guys. I'm going to keep it very simple. So we'll just say full name right here. And guys, you can style this. I need to emphasize this. You can style your dynamic page however you want. The only reason it's different is because the data is dynamic. So each page will change data-wise. The design will not change across your dynamic pages. Whatever your first initial dynamic page is, is what the design will be across all all of them connected to that specific database. The only thing that changes is the data displayed on each of those pages. So we'll do full name, then we'll do uh, we'll do uh, email, and then well, let's just go right under it. Then we'll do phone number, and then I'll get a bigger piece of text for our bio and I'll make it wider I'll add it in here I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna center it I'm gonna go back up here to later light uh, bio and then we need our profile picture and for this you could just bring in a random image for a placeholder know that whatever you choose in here does not matter it is just simply a placeholder image for right now so it does not matter what picture you come in here and choose I'm at least gonna get one that represents me so that way I can help you better understand this and get a scope for what this is but it does not have to be anything that you want across all of the pages the only thing that has to be set is the style you want it to be so if you don't want it to take up the whole page like that you could come in here to settings and uh, you can you know change the proportions auto fill it but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click it double click it and then it'll open the image settings and you could actually choose a shape so I'm gonna choose that circle kinda like the profile page and I'm gonna crop it up a little bit to be like a profile then you could drag the picture now I don't want it to necessarily be that big I'm gonna go ahead 
do just like that and then I'll press that apply and then bam now I've got the picture right there I can resize it and we'll just throw it right there okay guys so now well we'll throw it under for the sake of this so now we've got our information what we have to do to actually make it that damn make it a dynamic page is connect this information these little uh, fields to the fields in the database and the dynamic data set here is our glue it's what ha helps us connect these text fields and these image fields to the data in the database so by doing that we're going to click full name we're going to press connect to data on these three little buttons we're going to see it's already connected to that data set and text connects to full name and then you'll know it's success successfully connected when it turns green and we're going to go through and we're going to do that for each one and we're just going to correlate it to the corresponding field in the database email connects to email phone number connects to phone number in the database and then bio connects to bio in the database and then finally profile picture connects to profile picture in the database and just like that you're all set and then you could click save and we'll just say my site nine I guess we'll save and continue and then now I'm going to show you what it would look like if I throw some data in the database just as a sample so I'm going to go into the database going to go in guys that's about it for building it out now I'm just going to show you the finished product so now I'm going to go in I'll just name my name uh, email if you guys want to email my team and I to build out a project for you go ahead and feel free uh, let's throw a number in here uh, hey we are a creative agency not spell like that spell like that and then our profile picture I am gonna go ahead for the sake of this and use a different picture I do like that picture of myself but I'm gonna use a different one just so you can see how it changes I'm gonna go ahead and use that one right there it's gonna upload and then I'm gonna add it to the uh, database now to make sure it worked I'm gonna go ahead and press sync up here and I'm gonna copy all items from the sandbox this back-end editor database is a sandbox to the live database so now if I do this correctly what I can do is I could go to publish right and then I could go to view site and remember what that URL was for the dynamic page it was member profile data forward slash in this case Michael Strauch and now you can see that the dynamic page has been created and I have a unique URL for my specific page I said anyone on the site can go to it which means if I type this in and it was members only I would have to sign up to be a member in order to view this but since I clicked anyone for the database permissions I could just type it in directly and see it and we could see our data changed on our dynamic page to the corresponding data in the database that's exactly how that's done. Guys, if you have any questions or you want to get more creative with this, build out a sophisticated Wix website, go ahead and email my team and I. Link in the description below. Uh, if you guys enjoy this video, throw a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. I love you guys so much. You're an awesome community, and I will go ahead and catch you on our next video. Comment if you have any questions whatsoever. Thank you.